Today I'm gonna show you guys five tricks to make your slider shots less boring that look like this. All right guys, welcome back. I apologize, there's some drum circle that's going on outside, so if you hear that, I'm sorry. But, so today I'm gonna show you guys how to make your slider shots less boring. And obviously I'm just gonna run you through what you're gonna need and you're gonna need a slider. You're not gonna need a motorized slider. Actually, it's preferred that you don't have a motorized slider for this. If you have one that's modular, you can just take off the motor and use it for this situation. You're obviously gonna need your camera, a tripod head, and a tripod. And right now I'm using the iFootage uh, Gazelle tripod, which I love a lot because these things are super strong. And then you're gonna wanna use something down below that's gonna weight it like sandbags because you're gonna do a lot of crazy, crazy movements. Today, the product I'm gonna be using is this Honey that I found at the store. I'm not sponsored by them, I'm not paid by them. I just thought it was a cool package and I knew that I had an orange backdrop up right now and it's a pain in the butt to switch my backdrops because it's super high, I need to get a taller ladder. But nevertheless, and what I've done is I've connected to a custom built stand that I've built and I go into more detail on this and my lighting setups that I do in my product video course. And you can check out my product video course at productvideocourse.com to learn how to do this and the lighting setup that I'm doing today for this and how I prep this to make it really pretty. I'm gonna show you guys before we start up leveling our slider shots, just a typical shot that I see people get all the time, which is fine, but I believe that it's very overdone and not very exciting. So let's start with just that. And that's just a simple slide in and slide out just like this with your product. The first tip that I have for making your slider shots more interesting, interesting is adding movement to your product or your subject. And so the way that we're gonna add movement to our product is using this right here, which is a Lazy Susan. This is a motorized Lazy Susan and one that I recommend and I like a lot, which is the Com Ixim, C-O-M-X-I-M. I got it on Amazon and this is used just for rotating displays, but I like this one because it has a remote right here and using this remote allows it to speed it up, slow it down, reverse it, so you don't have to spend time waiting for it to come back around or you don't have to move it yourself and it has very minor vibrations. And if you're interested in getting this one, there's a link in the description below where you can follow to my gears list that has everything that I use. And this one is gonna be a little bit pricier than some other ones, but it's about $60 and this is the one that I recommend because it's super reliable. So we're gonna be placing our product down are the, we're gonna be placing the turntable down right here and then placing our product on top of here and make sure that it's as center as possible because if you don't keep it center, then as it rotates, it's gonna offset and make it a lot more difficult to get your shot straight on. So now that we've added movement in, just like that, make sure it's as slow as possible by going all the way down to the, to the lowest speed. I recommend doing that because that just gives you a little bit more time if you spin it too fast. You can always speed it up in post. It's harder to slow it down. So slow it down as much as you can, make sure it's center, let it go. And then we're just gonna do a simple push in again and see the difference between the two. So number one was adding movement to the product. The next one is being creative with the slider because a lot of people think, hey, let me level up my slider and that's gonna give me the best shot. I'm gonna show you guys something really cool and different. So the first thing I'm gonna do is totally throw this off and tilt it to the side, just like that. Boom, like that. And then I'm gonna bring it down like that. So right now we've changed the plane of our slider from this to this, that and I'm gonna show you guys the result that we're gonna get with this right now. So the next thing I'm gonna do is, I have my sandbags, make sure everything is very tight and we're gonna have our product start to spin. And then you're gonna do a push in, twist to the right and lift up at the same time and keep it in my rule of thirds. So, and then we're gonna make that a nice fast motion and it's gonna look really cool. 
for the next trick with the slider, what we're gonna do is recreate almost a jib movement, but with the slider. So what you're gonna to wanna to do is have your two of your legs in the back right here, perpendicular with each other, and then one in the front facing towards your product. Then what we're gonna do is take our back legs and raise them up as high as we can. So, like so. It's a little bit easier to do with two people. Now that we've done that, we're gonna to wanna to make sure that our camera doesn't pan at all. So we're gonna lock that one off and we're gonna make sure that we only have our tilt feature going like this. Beautiful. And the trick with this is that you're gonna to want to keep your product in frame the whole time. So as you're going down, you need to tilt up. And as you're going up, you need to tilt down. Now as we come closer, I'm gonna go like that and boom. And just gonna take a little bit of time to practice. And then sometimes you need to figure out what your dominant direction is. For me, it's not going like this because this is harder for me to track. It's going like this, backwards. Because I can push down and pull up at the same time. And I have my hands cupped like this and this, one on the tripod head and then one on right here. Oh, and that's beautiful. This next trick is all about changing the perspective. And so the way that we're gonna do that is I cut off a piece of the backdrop and put it right here on the table. And then what you're gonna to wanna to do is we're gonna to wanna to backlight it. So I'm just using a small light like the Aperture MC. I'm gonna place it down here. Then I have this plastic acrylic tube that's square cube, cube is what I meant to say. And um, we're gonna use this. And what that's gonna do is it's gonna separate our product from the background. Because if you lay your product like this, then it's gonna blend in here. You're not gonna give them nice depth and everything's gonna be in focus. So to make it really pretty, we're gonna raise it up and place it on just like that. Boom, just like that. And now what we have is we have a nice gold backlight shining through to our product and we're shooting right here. So the next thing is we gotta adjust the tripod and slider for this shot. I'm gonna make sure that I have two of the tripod legs facing forward so we can get as close as we can to the table. We're just gonna lift this, move in as close as we can to the table like that. And now what I have is I have a little bit of a crooked angle which is nice because what we're gonna do is we're gonna tilt down and we're gonna twist. And there's a few shots that you can do with this. In the first one, what we can do is we can just be pointing straight down like so, and we can lock everything off just like that. Get our focus, lock it off because we, wanna, we don't wanna jump our focus and just move it back and forth like so. And if you see the light, you can cheat the light. So right now I can see the light down here. What I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna cheat it down like this because we're never gonna see the light up here with the angle that we're at. And then you're just gonna do a nice and slow movement like so, going straight across. And then we're gonna get a little bit more wild by twisting it like this. And now what we're gonna do is go back to autofocus, single point auto autofocus, single point autofocus. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna be focusing and keeping my camera pointing right at the local hive honey the whole time. So we're gonna unlock both of these so we can pivot and tilt. And I'm gonna go backwards. And then I'm gonna go forwards and tilt down and pivot and pivot and pivot and pivot and pivot and pivot and, pivot and keep twisting and good. guys this is trick number five and number five what we're doing now is we brought a c-stand arm in and i'm just using double-sided tape to hold the honey upside down and now we've opened it we've lowered the c-stand as low as possible and we're just going to push in and tilt up and we're going to give our give the viewer a trick in perspective because they're going to think that we're just flipping the shot but then once the honey or if you use soda or anything that you want to pour out starts to pour out, it's gonna really wow the viewer because they're gonna be like, how did they get that shot? And all we did was this, and it's gonna look really cool. So let's do it. 
now that I poked a hole in it, just took a second, now the honey's gonna drip and we gotta get our shot because we only have so much time. Guys, that's it for this tutorial. I hope that you enjoyed it and I hope that you guys really opened up your eyes to what you can create with a slider because this is only the tip of the iceberg and there's so many different techniques that you can come up with if you just practice and get creative. If you haven't checked out my product video course, I promise you, you are missing out. You could be making product videos from home and making money just like me doing what I do. For all the information, the link to the product video course is in the bio below. Comment with your guys' coolest techniques that you've used with your slider, I'd love to see them. And please like, share, and subscribe. Until next time.